Hey everyone, the fly I'm gonna be tying for you today is my stone pony. This is a stone fly, uh, and it's on the smaller size, that's why it's called a pony. Uh, you know, when you flip rocks out there, not every stone fly that you see is a 2X long, size 10 or size eight. Um, they certainly have a place in your box, but um, I have a lot of success using smaller stone flies. If you know anything about a stone fly, they do have a three year life cycle. So uh, a lot of stone flies are small. Um, and uh, this represents a golden stone fly. Uh, a lot of the streams that I fish, there's a, you know, they have a lot of stone flies. And when I size down, I tend to have some really good success on this fly. So. Uh, I'm going to put a hook in the vise and I'm going to spin one up for you. So the hook we have in the vise is a size 14. This is a Hannock 470. The bead is a copper 3.3 bead. I tie these in two eights, but most of them are 3.3 three, three to 3.5. Three, I like to overweight them because the rubber legs do give a bit of a parachute effect on it. So I do like to compensate that to overweight it. I'll also tie these in a size 12, but this is definitely the workhorse of this fly, size 14. The thread we're using is a Uni 8 Ot, and this is camel. You can use any type of a brown thread. So go ahead and start it behind the bead. You can see I didn't have this big thread build up. If you've seen any other tying videos of mine, you know that I'm not a big fan of that. So for the tailing and for the leg fibers, we're using uh, rubber legs from Montana Fly Company. These are barred sexy floss in golden yellow is the color and size small is key. So you want small, this is a size 14 fly. And even on the size 12s, I use small. So we're just gonna grab one strand and we're gonna cut it off. Now, most stonefly patterns, if you're tying a Pat's rubber legs or something like that, which is a good pattern, by the way, um, you see most people double it over and just kind of crank it down like this. I I'm not a big fan of that. I mean, although it does work, uh, but you can see sometimes it's just kind of hard to control it and you got to keep manipulating it around to get it where you want it. I actually like to just, it's easier to just simply cut it in half and then just take one strand and you can put it on the side and take it down. So you can see it splays this way or goes in. I like to have it splayed out like that if possible. So you just control it the best way you can, but I like to lay it up on its side and I like the tail a little bit longer than the body. So we're just gonna go ahead and put one leg on the side with a loose wrap, just check it and you can see I have it laid perfectly on the side. And then we're just gonna go ahead and take it down the hook shank. Now, I'm not cranking it down. I mean, I just have some nice pressure on it, but nothing any, you know, we're not just digging in. You, there's just no need to do that. And you can see how it splays out really nice, easy to control. Go ahead and advance the thread back up. Cut that piece off. Just take the other half, we're gonna turn the hook and we're just gonna lay this one on its side. Just make sure that we have it in place. Take a loose wrap. Just get it on the side there. And it's just very easy to control it this way. Once again, we're not really cranking it down. Not a lot of, not a ton of pressure. Be careful that, <laughs> of the hook point. And you can see it just look nice and splayed. Just really easy. Now we'll go ahead and trim that at the end. So go ahead and advance the thread back up. So for the ribbing, we're gonna be using a UTC Ultra Wire. This is Sculpt and Olive in Brassy. I really like the Sculpt and Olive color. It's the color I was looking for. When this fly gets wet, the uh, ribbing really stands out. Um, if you can't find Sculpt and Olive, I would use a brown, but you really wanna keep it in that brown to Sculpt and Olive. So just stick the wire in the slot of the bead, then pull the wire towards you and you wanna wrap it down on the hook shank facing you. 
go ahead and take the thread all the way down to the bottom. Now, the body is gonna be tied with hare's ear. This is hare's ear, it's called Mad Rabbit Dubbing. It's from Trout Line, and the color is yellow. I just absolutely love this stuff. So, we're gonna make the abdomen. Um, it's now a stonefly, half of the body is an abdomen, and the other half is a thorax, and it's really cut right in the middle. So, we're just gonna make a thin noodle, and we're gonna put about an inch of dubbing on, and actually a little bit less. You can see that's probably three quarters of an inch, and that's gonna be just enough to take us right to about the halfway point, and I might just put a smidge more on, because it's not quite to the halfway point, but we're gonna, we're gonna get it there. And that's the great thing about dubbing. You can always add it if you need it. And you can always take it off. So just a little bit more that takes us right to the halfway point. Now, when we're gonna wrap this, uh, when we rib this fly, most people, when you rib, you rib at a slant, a slightly slant, but we wanna manipulate this wire. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna counter rib it towards us. So go ahead and get it in position. And we're gonna make perfect wraps right circular around the hook shank. And we're going to do really close. One, two, three, four, five. I did five wraps really close together. And if you were to look at and go ahead and helicopter it off. So if you were to look at a stone fly, when you look at the abdomen, the, you have uh, just these perfect ribs and they're very close together. So that's why we wanna keep our, ri uh, our, our rib close together when we uh, take it up the abdomen. So this is, once again, this is a size 14. This is only halfway up and I did five wraps around. So for the next step, we're gonna go ahead and you got a bunch, I got a bunch of loose pieces around here, but essentially what I'm doing is if you take one strand, cut it in half, and then cut that in half. So really a quarter of one strand, okay? Now we're just gonna lay it on the side. Now you can see it's a little bit of a curve to it. That's the side we wanna have facing up. So you just lay it there by hand, and then you can see a couple loose wraps, and it's in perfect position. So we're gonna take the other one, we're gonna just hold it there with our finger. Real easy to do one at a time like this. Couple wraps around it. And that looks good. So as we build the thorax up here, you're gonna see we're gonna move these legs into place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a, uh, a nice thorax here. So. Take some more of the hair's ear, and we're gonna put about a two inch noodle on, still very thin, and we're probably gonna use more hair's ear, but I like starting out with two inches because you can control a two inch noodle much easier than a four inch noodle. So, so just go ahead, that's about two inches, and now we're just gonna start building this thorax, and you wanna take it behind the legs as well. So go ahead and pull it behind the legs. You can see when I do that, it actually splays the legs out really nicely. So I'm going around that one, around the middle. I'm gonna go around it again, around the middle. Get a little bit more hairs here. So that was two inches of dubbing. And I'm probably gonna add another half an inch or so. That might be about an inch. So I'm gonna go around this back one again. And we can move these legs around if we have to. So go ahead and build it. Because remember, this thorax is pretty prominent and it's a lot larger than the abdomen. You can always move these legs around. Now for the last thing, we're gonna advance the thread up and get it behind the bead. So for the next step, we're gonna just build a small collar. This is Jan Saman. This is uh, bronze 
UV peacock dubbing. Just a small collar. Hope it's still in frame there. It's about a half an inch, and we're just going to go ahead and build it behind the bead there. And you can see as we do that, some of those legs are going to pop backwards. Now, one of the last steps is to finish it off. We take a little super glue. I always, t I always finish off all my flies with that. A couple wraps around. And then only one, two whip finishes. And that fly's not going anywhere. Now, we're just going to move these legs around. Looks really good. I'm going to trim the tail a bit. I like the tail a little bit longer, and I eyeball this. But it gives you, the, when you have a tail that's a little bit longer than the body, you just get really nice movement. These legs look good. I'm just going to even out this one. Doesn't have to be perfect. And for the last step, we're going to take a brown Sharpie. And as you know, stone flies, they're dark on the top. And then you have that nice golden yellow body on the bottom. So there you go. There is your stone pony. This is a fabulous little golden stone fly pattern. I really feel confident if you put a row of these in your box, you're going to have some success out there. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I'm happy to answer them for you. Uh, if you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. And as always, tight lines, everybody. I'll talk to you later.